Ashaka, a lot of people have been uh, asking me every time I travel, they ask me about uh, Shaka. Uh, who is Shaka? What makes uh, Shaka who he is? Very briefly, can you walk us uh, through your journey? Shaka is a very simple, very ordinary kid from a place called Kavale, which is a small southwestern Ugandan town. Uh, I was born uh, in the suburbs of Kabale, if you will. And uh, because of that, I had a lot of advantages, uh, one of them being that I could access watching cinema. Cowboys, we used to say, when I was a very, very little kid. Take us uh, through uh, coming from Kabale to United States. When I started interacting with the cinema, uh, it led to my developing an interest, for example, in reading the daily newspaper of Uganda, which was the Uganda Argus. That also, in a way, uh, uh, triggered my developing an interest in reading a monthly magazine published out of Soweto, by the way, which is called Southwestern Township of Johannesburg. Drum magazine, Paul, you can't believe it, it became like my Bible. And as I grew up, uh, going to Kampala and going to United States Information Service Library on Bombo Road during those days, I started interacting with Ebony Magazine. And as I interacted with Ebony Magazine, of course, uh, featuring some of these great African-American characters, like Sidney Poitier, uh, I started thinking about, you know what? Maybe someday I could find myself in the United States, hanging out with people like Sidney Poitier, hanging out with people like John Wayne, a character I used to see in cinema, of course, playing the cowboy. I felt cowboy. like uh, I really wanted to go beyond the interaction. I wanted to be in a situation where I could be on the ground and write some of those stories, telling the story of those people who I looked at and felt that they were victims, and I was able to associate with them. So that's how you essentially became a journalist? That's eventually how I became a journalist, because then I said, how do I become a journalist? Then I come to the United States. When I come to the United States, I have to go to school. You see, unlike you, Paul, when I came here, I must admit that uh, I was intellectually malnourished. I was suffering from a sort of intellectual kwashako. So I had to liberate myself intellectually. So I ended up going to the State University of New York at Albany, where I did my undergraduate, scored very, very well, got a scholarship or a fellowship, did a master's degree. Following that, went to the University of California, Los Angeles, or better known as UCLA, went, studied for a PhD. It took me a very long time, Paul, but eventually, you know what? I got it. And it's through that kind of process that I eventually find myself at The Voice of America. And you've had a, a, a stellar career here at uh, The Voice of America. Uh, some people that I've talked to, people who know you, say that uh, you are reasonably well informed about uh, the issues that you cover, especially on the African continent. What makes you tick, Shaka? What makes me tick, if it is ticking at all really, is that uh, I do my homework. I am a very focused individual. I have the passion that you need to be a good journalist. I do my research, research, and research. And I can assure you that uh, if someone suggested that I was perhaps a remarkable case of a second birth in one lifetime, I wouldn't deny it. <laughs> 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 Very interesting, Shaka. So what is it that uh, you do to, to make you stand out? Uh, there are a lot of uh, people who cover the continent, they cover the same issues, but somehow you stand out. Uh, what makes that difference? Like I said, I think uh, I do the necessary homework, really, and I think that is also uh, appreciated by my audience. Uh, the other thing I, I think I have been able to succeed at uh, is... Uh, when I first got the opportunity to host Straight Talk Africa, which is about 15 years ago, by the way, um, I remember being asked, how will you consider yourself a success, Shaka? I remember telling myself, if I can first and foremost succeed at remaining, guess what, 
authentically Shaka Sali, the Kavari kid, with my African tonation, my African accent. And I think I s I've been able to succeed in seeing myself in my audience, and my audience has also equally felt comfortable seeing itself in Shaka Sali. And as such, we've been able to connect. We've been able to resonate. How is that even possible? Because there are kids out there that I meet, they have never even been in the United States, but they sound more American than somebody like you who has been here for a long time. I think it is because unlike them, I have been lucky. Not only did I come to the United States, but guess what, Paul? The last time I checked, I have been here for 39 years. And through those years, I have gained the confidence, the courage of being comfortable in my own skin, the kid from Kavari. I was able to study cross-cultural communication at UCLA and a lot of other things. And frankly, I discovered that you don't need to be anything other than yourself in order for you to succeed at what you do. And for that, I must have been inspired by none other than Henry Kissinger, a one-time US, U.S. Secretary of State, and uh, Richard Nixon. I remember when he was Richard Nixon's National Security Advisor, appoint him to be his Secretary of State. He told him, Henry, make sure that you do not address a lot of press conferences because your accent and tonation do not play in Oklahoma. But guess what? Henry did address a lot of press conferences. He was always like Time Magazine Man of the Year and you name it. The press, you know, the press, the media loved Henry. And Henry in turn loved it. And he was certainly, he was, in my view, arguably one of the most successful secretaries of state that the United States has ever had. Shaka, I'm one of those people who have, uh, who have grown up uh, looking up to you, uh, listening to you, watching you. I, as a matter of fact, uh, I was in a class where you came to speak and uh, you gave us, you challenged all of us uh, to be better than uh, you, for example, to climb on your shoulders and see a little bit further. Uh, when I talk to people, they say you inspire them. Uh, maybe what, I, what do they mean when they say you inspire them? Perhaps because, uh, like me, uh, who was able to identify certain people, admire them, and uh, in some cases uh, got an opportunity to come closer to them. Uh, and some of them, in fact, were willing to, they were generous enough and willing to lend me their shoulders so that I could climb on those shoulders in order for me to see a little bit further than them. Maybe, just maybe, that is exactly what those people who say, I have inspired them, that is what they see in me. Because whenever I have had an opportunity to interact with young people, as you say, back in 1997, I interacted with lots of people at Makere University, and you happen to have been among them, uh, yes. I volunteered my shoulders to you to climb on so that you can be a little bit better than me, really. Uh, because you know, when you stand on somebody's shoulders, you obviously see much further than that particular individual. And I'm glad to say that uh, you are obviously one of the results in the sense that, uh, guess what? You are right here at the Voice of America interviewing me. And you probably, at the time, didn't see how remotely that could ever have been possible. Th that's very true, Shaka. Uh, if you are to talk to us from, I'll use your words, from the deepest, better part of your heart and soul, uh, what would Shaka tell a young boy in uh, Nigeria, a young boy in Ghana, a young boy in Uganda, or a young girl for that matter, uh, who emulates you and want to be like you? I would tell them that uh, they should emulate the simple, uh, down to earth kid from Kavari, who came from Kavari, had a dream, and eventually realized his dream, and has, has honestly been lucky to live his dream. 
I would advise them not to look at Shaka Sali as a star, as a famous icon. Because you know what? The Chinese have a saying that men dread fame, just like a pig dreads fattening, for both could be a prelude to slaughter. All you need is to be a simple guy, work very hard, have the passion for what you like, and do it to the best of your ability. Don't settle for being good, because being good is not good enough. You have to be the best, the best that you can be. How do you overcome your challenges? Uh, when you're on TV, you appear to be simple, you appear to know everything, but behind the scenes, I'm sure you have challenges. How do you overcome such challenges? By doing your homework. You have to prepare for whatever you do. Like I told you earlier, there are three important words in my vocabulary before I go on a set, or even days before I go on a set. Research, research, research. I can never engage anybody, Paul, until and unless I am sure that I am in a position either to know more than that person or at least to be on the same page with my potential newsmaker. Once you do your homework, you become confident. Once you are confident, you are a simple guy, as simple as they come. And that has been my secret. Thank you so much, Shaka. You're most welcome. Yeah, that was uh, very, very nice of you. Thank, Thank you. you.